PlayStation 5 prior repair attempt at another shop, and oh boy, it's a doozy. Let's take a look. I'm not entirely certain that this is savable, but I will make every attempt. That looks like a fairly deep hole dug into the layer, and we could be having shorted layer problems. But we won't know until we get it cleaned up, so that's going to be my first task. While I'm setting up my equipment to start cleaning up, let me throw my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you head to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, or if you buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. Switch it back to microscope. Let's add some flux and see what we're dealing with. Do some fairly gentle cleanup here. You're not scrubbing. You're just gliding across, especially in this case. Let's clean it off and have a look. That is a nasty cut, but it's not quite as bad as it looked like. Don't know if we can save it, we'll try. I hope these are all ground, but I don't know. I need to know. So I paused the recording to look up an image of the HDMI circuit unfettered by a cut and i forgot to hit record again once i had come to the conclusions that i'm about to share with you so i made this little diagram everything in the orange is ground and i determined through the picture on the left that the only lines that were really cut was that one ground line furthest to the right on the left hand picture now the thing to know about ground on a connector is it is the most redundant it has many backups your four big anchors the entire shield of the connector is ground and it has many ground connect so i came to the conclusion that i wasn't even going to worry about the pins connected to ground all i'm going to worry about is the signal connections here uh, as you can see i had three blue highlighted signal connections before this you only saw two but you'll see why there will be a third i also came to the conclusion that i was going to grind out a little bit of the cut just to make sure it wasn't making connection to any of the signal pads in the area and then i was going to cover it in uv coating we will rejoin the recording after i've done the cure we are well cured at this point and i've come to the decision that i'm not going to worry about running these ground ones i'm just going to worry about the signals which means i'm probably going to need to replace this pad here it's already gone i think we'll just kill it off here so we need to run a jumper here and we have a little bit of pad to work with on that one. I'm not going to worry about this one. This is ground. I need to run a jumper here. I need to run a jumper up here. I think that might be it. So here, here, here. And I think we probably can get away with the rest of those as long as these don't short together. There's a little bit of pad damage on them, so we'll have to be careful there. Let's grab our handy dandy grinding tool and give ourselves a little bit more working space. We'll take it up to the via. This one as well. This one's almost scraped enough, so we'll just scrape off the via. Anything else? I think we're good. Turn up our remaining pads. Turn up the pure tube. We're going to have to put that 4K cap back on. Got me concerned about bridging there. This pad may be too far gone too. We just don't want any pads bridging to other pads here. I think we'll be okay on everybody else. I think we still have enough pads to work with when we go to solder on these. I That works for that one. We're not going to worry about this one. This is ground. Just take advantage of that pad left over there. make the rest of the pads work, right? I'll do UV coating round two. Get all the areas we didn't get before. And the jumpers. 
I want to secure the jumpers down so that they don't move when the solder wets. It will wet when we go to flow the port in. But we want them to stay right where they are. Not float to some other pin or suck up into the port. We will cure round two. Put the big lamp on it, step away for a few, and we'll be back. Our jumper should be well cured into place. Go ahead and scrape our jumpers. I could probably just burn off the enamel too, but I think we'll do one more thing tonight and then we're going to push this off until tomorrow. It's getting a little bit late. We're going to go ahead and place our 4K capacitor. Grab a cap. Very tiny cap. Drop our air to 20%. Fill this guy in. Doesn't have to be perfect. That should work. Turn our jumpers and it should be fairly well prepped for tomorrow. I'm going to push off the rest till tomorrow and we'll fire it up and get started on another day. It is the next day and we still have some prep work we need to do before we can put a new port on this. First things first, let's cut off this excess wire. We need to wick out these anchors. Flood these anchors with low mount. It's much easier to do with a port installed because the solder will climb up the leg and through to the other side. It's a little harder to get it through to the other side without the leg. Tinner pins. This will help make contact with the jumpers. I tend the pins anyway, even if we're not running jumpers. Excellent. Well, I think the pins will reach even the nubs, partially ripped pads. We will warm everything up first. Starting to see some wetting now. We can place our port. Press it down. Make sure everybody is wetted before we let go. We gotta wet the solder on the pins too. There we go, starting to suck up that solder. Hold it down while it dries. Okay. Let's investigate how we did. Connected. 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 Excellent. Check our non ripped pads. Okay, this one needs help. That's one of our partial pads. It looks like that is it. We have one that needs help there. Excellent. It's going to be this one here. That couldn't have gone much better. Let's see if we can get that soldered with our Pico pencil. We'll give ourselves a little bit more steadiness with the tweezers. Right. I think that went well. Excellent. Everybody's making connection that should be making connection. The ones that are not were ground and were the ones we were not going to worry about. Now that does not mean that this is going to work. There was severe damage done here so and it could have been another problem to begin with. We just don't know. Get our anchor soldered. Excellent feed through. Next step is going to be to clean thoroughly the port inside and out and then we'll reassemble and cross our fingers and hope what we did here will bring this thing back to life. I hope this video is being helpful to you on your repair journey. Just a reminder that this is beyond something you want to try yourself. I offer these services. Just head over to micromage.repair, click on free quote, fill out the form and I'll respond to you personally. I think we're together enough to test. Moment of truth. Well, that's excellent. We were able to repair this one, even with a big old gouge in the board. That was an exciting save. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one right here. And I'll see you there.